What's going on everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. Welcome to part one of the 240's interior restoration. This video is going to focus more on the finer details including refurbishing the original leather wrapped steering wheel and shift knob, disassembling the dash, replacing some switches, polishing buttons, fixing a broken rear view mirror, and just general cleaning. A bunch of little tedious, time consuming, nitpicky things, but it's going to look really, really cool when it's done. Part two is going to be completely tearing out the interior and replacing the carpet and adding a lot of sound deadening. So a lot of hands-on stuff coming. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So before tackling the steering wheel, let's go ahead and remove the shift knob. Removing the shift knob is pretty straightforward. You just grab it and rotate it counterclockwise, but you're probably going to have to put some serious elbow grease to initially break it loose, especially if the knob has never been removed in the past. But once you break it loose, you keep on twisting it a whole bunch of times and then it will eventually be loose. All right, we are finally free. The reason it was taking so long to get off earlier is that there's dried up glue or thread locker, whatever you call it in there that was like keeping the knob in place. But once I broke through that, it was pretty easy to get the rest off. While I had the shift knob off, I'm also going to replace the shift boot. This is a brand new shift boot from Nissan for the S13 240SX. This one's still in pretty good shape, but there's some rips and tears and stuff. And because you can still get this directly from the factory, it's kind of a no-brainer to go ahead and replace that too. But to get to it, you have to pop off the center console trim, which isn't hard. You just lift up and slowly pop out the clips. The shift boot is held in by screws, so once you take these four out, it's just a matter of swapping them out. So out with the old and in with the new. Now we're going to go ahead and take the steering wheel off. The first thing you got to do is take off this plastic cover, which has a bunch of hardware underneath, the wires for the horn, as well as the main bolt that actually secures the wheel to the steering column. To get this off, you have to undo a few screws, or at least my car has cruise control, so on the right-hand side spoke, I actually have two screws back here, where um, if you don't have this, it's just one, and then there's one other one down below here. All right, the screws are out, now we can remove this cover. I would recommend to go ahead and disconnect your battery at this point just because you are going to be messing with some electrical wires back there. And two, if you're pulling and moving around and stuff on it, you're going to be honking the horn like crazy. So just save yourself from aggravation and go ahead and disconnect that battery. Basically, there's four you know, metal retaining clips in there that you're just going to have to use a little bit of force and pop loose. At this point, there's only one more wire holding on this cover, so just use a pair of pliers to make it a bit easier, but just apply some force and wiggle it off. There you go. So the only thing left to do is to remove this big 19 millimeter bolt right here. But before you do that, and before you remove this wheel or any wheel, is make sure that the wheel is straight. So right now I have it locked and it always comes back to the middle right here. So that's my baseline. When I go to put this wheel back on, or if you're installing an aftermarket steering wheel and put it on, there's no guesswork. Everything lines up properly and you don't risk, you know, putting it in the wrong position and having to redo it all later. Like the shift knob, this is going to require some muscle, maybe not quite as intense, but don't be afraid to put your back into it. <clears throat> there we go. So right before I filmed this video, I actually watched David Patterson's overview of replacing the steering wheel in his 240. If you haven't checked his channel out, it's that dude in blue, and the link is in the description box below. But he was saying that these steering wheels can either come out easily or just be an absolute bear. And his was a little bit of a bear, and it was kind of funny watching him, you know, tugging on it and stuff, and basically shaking the whole car. And one of his friends came in and did a just this crazy little maneuver or something and got it out real quick. So we're gonna see how this goes. Uh, first of all, just gonna try to pull on it. Golly! Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. It's it's not gonna come out. <laughs> Let's try that other way. Oh wait! Oh, we got it! Yes! I am very thankful that came off the way it did because I did not want to smack on my car, but you gotta do what you gotta do. 
it's actually kind of funny. You can see the original finish of the leather on the back here, and then the grodiness that separates the niceness from the shiny black that it is now. It's, it's gross. <laughs> the only thing left to do now is to take this and the shift knob to the leather restoration shop, get them all fixed up, looking like brand new. I can't wait to see what they look like. In the meantime, let's go ahead and disassemble the rest of the steering column covers right here and replace these two switches. I don't know what it is about the stalks and old 240s that makes them fade the way they do, especially after 30 years of wear and tear and sun exposure. I mean, they've faded to different shades of gray and there's a little yellow mixed in there. There's a lot of scratches. They just, they look terrible. <laughs> it's a real eyesore to the interior, especially because this is your field of vision all the time. This is what you see. So in going the length of doing what I'm doing to the steering wheel and shift knob, I wanted to make sure that I got new stalks so it'll look all nice and fresh just to complete the package. That being said, here's the new stalks. Now you can get these refinished. I know there's some people online that do it and you could probably figure it out yourself, but I just opted to go ahead and buy new equipment if I'm going to the extent with everything else on the car. This one, the wiper stalk, is actually still in stock through Nissan, so I went ahead and got that. That's a Nissan original part. This one I bought online. It's an aftermarket switch. This is the, the headlamp and turn signal switch because Nissan doesn't have that one in stock anymore unfortunately but honestly looking at them side by side same fit and finish they feel the same same level of quality so I think it's gonna work out great so now let's get to it there's four screws underneath that actually hold these two pieces together once those are out you can just peel them away Correction, there's actually six screws that you have to take out in order to disassemble this casing. That always seems to be the case. You think you know what you're doing, but there's always one or two more bolts or screws that always seem to elude you, and that was definitely the case here. So the other two screws are actually located underneath the dash right here. Typically, you don't see them. You have to remove the lower dash panel, which, again, is just held in with a bunch of screws. Once that's down, you can use a long screwdriver, get those last two, and then it's free to go. All you have to do is just start working around, remove that piece, and are we free? Almost free, maybe not. Yes, we're free. Now for the easy part, all we have to do is undo four screws, and I'm sure it's four screws this time. <laughs> so there's two that hold in the light and turn signal stalk, and two that hold in the wiper stalk. These basically sit within their own little cubbies. You just slide them on out and go ahead and start undoing all the electrical connectors. All that's left to do now is to reconnect the new stalks. What's up everyone? So it's about a couple weeks later and the steering wheel and shift knob are finally done. They turned out absolutely amazing. I actually found a local gentleman in Winston-Salem, North Carolina by the name of Mark Payne who does leather and vinyl restoration. If you're in the area or are willing to send your items or travel, I highly suggest checking him out. All the contact info can be found in the description box below. Super talented. You would think this wheel came directly from Nissan. It's that good. It's going to be a real centerpiece to the interior. But there's still a bunch of housekeeping items that I still have to do while I have everything taken apart. So without further ado, let's go ahead and tackle the instrument cluster. The primary reason I wanted to take this apart was to clean out all the dust in the instrument cluster that's collected all of these years and polish this plastic face a little bit. It's in really good shape. Thankfully, I don't have any burned out bulbs or anything like that, so I don't have to change out any lights. I thought about doing a full LED conversion, but it was a little bit too intense for this video. It's not really worth it right now because I don't have any burned out bulbs, but it opens up some content for a future video possibly. To get the speedometer out or the instrument cluster, you have to take out this black bezel. Now, there's two plastic retaining clips underneath the bezel, as well as two screws up in the very top of the bezel. Once you pop that loose and unscrew those, you actually have to drop the steering column to allow you enough clearance to actually pull the bezel out around the padded dash. 
All right, now that these are unhooked and the bezel is out, I can go ahead and take out the instrument cluster. There's three screws that hold in the instrument cluster and of course a bunch of wires behind it that you're gonna have to disconnect. Now let's clean up the instrument cluster. This is a pretty simple process. There's a bunch of plastic clips along the back side of the instrument cluster that will release this plastic face. I have to take that off to get the dust out from inside. And while I have it off, I'm gonna go ahead and polish up this face and get rid of a lot of the, the scuffs and haze marks and stuff from it just being so old. The last major thing I have to clean is the bezel for the instrument cluster. I'm gonna have to pop these buttons out and hand polish them to get them, you know, looking like new again. Basically, they look terrible right now because they have this yellowy haze on it that has already started to chip from like use and stuff. And it almost looks like the haze that you see on headlamps of older cars. So I got some extra buttons from a 240 parts car just to try out this little theory I had of putting cleaner wax or plastic polish on them and just, just working it until it came clean. And what do you know, it did a fantastic job. The buttons look like brand new. So pop these out. The only thing that I couldn't do that with was the wiper buttons because they're painted and I figured, you know, once they get chipped, they're chipped and there's not really anything you could do about it. But Calvin's Garage actually put me in touch with a gentleman on Instagram that's making these decals that go over the button. So basically you're just covering all the scratches and stuff with this really nice looking decal and it makes it look, you know, again, brand new and matches everything else that I'm doing right here. So huge thanks to him. All of his contact info as well as his online shop and blog of his 240 Resto Mod can all be found in the description box below. The only thing left to do now is to go ahead and reassemble everything, but since that's basically reverse of everything that I've already shown you guys, I'm not going to bore you with all of that. Let me go ahead and get all this put back together and then we can finally put that steering wheel and shift knob back on. Now that the dash is done, I'm going to turn my attention to the center console and get that taken care of. Like I mentioned earlier, I was able to track down an original leather shift boot for this car, which is going to complement the refreshed knob quite nicely. When it comes to restoring a car, it's the little details that matter the most. With the rear view mirror, for example, which I mentioned earlier was broken, I had a floppy dimmer switch that served no function and it just shook around all the time, so I really needed to tackle that. So I collected a handful of different mirrors, like a couple from the local salvage yard, one from eBay, and of course the one that was in the car to begin with. I took them all apart, looked at all the parts that were still good, and combined them all to make a perfect rearview mirror, or as perfect as you can get using old parts, and it turned out fantastic. Now, I have a perfectly working rearview mirror, and didn't have to go aftermarket or anything like that, so I'm very happy with how that turned out. Last but certainly not least, let's go ahead and reinstall the steering wheel. Because the car didn't move from its locked position, like I was mentioning earlier with keeping the steering wheel at the same angle, it's absolutely perfect. Now I just need to refit the horn cover, tie in a bunch of screws, put in that 19 millimeter bolt, and we should be good to go. The steering wheel is on and man does it look good. It feels good, but I can't wait to get this thing out on the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on that steering column trim and I'll see you guys in a bit. Well everyone, we're finally back in the 240. I swear, going two weeks without driving this car is like absolute torture. It's just so much fun, just as it is. Plus my gauges still work, the buttons still work, and my horn still works, so big W on my part for not breaking anything. Like I said earlier, it's the details that are really going to set this car apart from most 240s out there. And just sitting from the driver's seat right now with the refurbished components, the cleaned up instruments and stalks and, and all that stuff. It's just, it's like it's transporting me back to 1989 and it's just, it's, it's awesome. I love originality and I'm going to try to preserve as much of it with this car as possible, but if you've already been following the series, obviously there's a lot of really cool stuff coming, including an RB25 turbo. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to, and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like below. 
as always, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everyone.